OCO, since the beginning of the year, we have been working on renewing an important agreement with the state of Oklahoma, our Motor Vehicle Tag Compact. Unfortunately, Governor Stitt has made clear that a fair compact for Cherokee Nation may not be possible. If Governor Stitt does not change course, we will still issue car tags to our citizens within our reservation. Cherokees can legally drive those tagged vehicles anywhere in the state or the country, but we will no longer issue tags and titles to those living outside the reservation. Our car tag compact has delivered $258 million in revenue since it started in 2002. Public schools, roads, and law enforcement agencies have reaped the benefit. In fact, if you live within the reservation or in nearby areas like Tulsa or Muskogee, your school has shared in over $92 million and gets a check annually from the Cherokee Nation. Our compact is the only tribal vehicle tag compact in the state that puts the tribe, not the state, in charge of issuing tags and titles to our citizens. Governor Stitt can't stand it. Tags for at-large citizens and sharing revenue will come to an end if Governor Stitt does not rethink his position. The two other tag compacts in the state, the Chickasaw and Choctaw agreements, put the state in charge of issuing tags and titles. Those tribal tags are actually State of Oklahoma tags on vehicles with State of Oklahoma titles. I respect the Choctaw and Chickasaw Nation, and those agreements work for those tribes. Our system, which has successfully been in place for over two decades, employs over 80 tribal citizens across seven tag offices across our reservation. We issue the tags and titles. We collect the revenue. We share it with local schools, county commissioners, and law enforcement agencies. We keep the rest for our own education and public safety needs. The state shares in millions of dollars in this revenue. In 2013, we extended our compact with then-Governor Mary Fallon to do what we cannot legally do otherwise, provide tags and titles to Cherokees living outside of the Cherokee Nation Reservation. Even better, we negotiated a special provision for adjacent areas like Tulsa and Muskogee counties so that the tag and tax rate in those areas are the exact same as in the reservation. I've tried to negotiate a new compact with Governor Stitt in a respectful manner, asking to keep in place what we've had. But he keeps negotiating in the media, so we must respond with the facts. Governor Stitt has made several things clear. He does not want Cherokee Nation issuing our own tags and titles. He does not want at-large citizens living closest to our reservation boundaries to be treated like their Cherokee families who live across the road or a few miles away. Governor Stitt wants us to pay even more based on his wild claims that Cherokees owe between $4 million and $8 million in unpaid turnpike tolls. Thousands of Cherokees have pike passes and pay tolls every day. As is all too common with politicians these days, Governor Stitt made a mistake when he implemented his bungled plate pay system, and now he's spinning around looking for someone to blame. He failed to consult with the Cherokee Nation when he moved the state to plate pay, and he did not give us an opportunity to help him fix a problem before he created it. Cherokees are not scoff laws. Had the governor informed the nation before he switched to plate pay, we would have worked with him to make sure that no Cherokee fell through the giant chasm that he created. Governor Stitt also falsely claims that we do not share tag information with law enforcement. He has repeated this lie so often, some people believe it. In fact, we've always shared real-time data with law enforcement through the nationally recognized OLET system, and law enforcement have confirmed they have no problems. My fellow Cherokees, in the next few weeks, we will need to decide our next steps. Governor Stitt is holding at-large Cherokee tags hostage to his demands. Governor Stitt at least knows this much about our tribal sovereignty. We cannot issue at-large tags and titles without a compact. He knows it, and he wants to pit Cherokees on the reservation against at-large Cherokees in what can only be described as a power play. But equally as important, he has forgotten that Cherokees are also Oklahomans, 
While Governor Stitt may not care about hurting Cherokees, he should care about the schools and law enforcement agencies that will lose critical funding because of his hostility towards the Cherokee Nation. That's worth repeating. Governor Stitt is putting funding for things you care about at risk. Funding for schools, roads, and law enforcement ends if Governor Stitt ends the compact. If Governor Stitt insists that we end our system of issuing our own tags and titles, should we agree to that? This means vanity plates and state vehicle titles for at-large Cherokees. It means laying off dozens of Cherokees and closing tag offices. Should we agree to pay the state upwards of $8 million for supposed uncollected toll fees because of his mistake? Should we move to a different rate for sharing tag revenue? My administration is always transparent. You have a right to know what is happening with our motor vehicle tag negotiations. You deserve the facts. You also deserve leaders who will keep negotiating in good faith. We'll keep doing so. At the same time, we all need to prepare for January the 1st, 2025. Unless Governor Stitt dramatically changes, we will keep issuing tags, but we will have no compact. That will mean no more tags and titles for at-large Cherokees. It will also mean we continue to issue tags and titles to Cherokees living within the reservation and that our at-large Cherokees who have valid titles and tags living outside the reservation in Oklahoma are subject to prosecution by the state after December the 31st, 2024, or when their tags expire. It means we no longer have a system of sharing our tag revenue with state and local governments, including public schools. All of this is 100% avoidable if Governor Stitt will keep our compact in place for another term. It's a win for all Oklahomans. The renegotiation of the Cherokee Tag Compact should not hinge on Governor Stitt's ego and him trying to claim a false victory in a war that only he is waging. I've said many times that Cherokee Nation is the best friend the state could ever have, and that's still true. We are Cherokees, and we are Oklahomans, and what's good for the Cherokee Nation is good for the state. Just ask the tens of thousands of people who rely on Cherokee Nation for their livelihood, and the schools and law enforcement and fire departments and county commissioners who rely on Cherokee Nation dollars to meet their critical needs. Ultimately, Cherokee leaders will need to make a decision on the motor vehicle compact that's in the best interest of the Cherokee Nation as a whole. We welcome your input. Governor Stitt, it's time for you to stop your one-sided fight. Oklahomans deserve better.